through my recorder, by the way. So we are recording. So at least for this first scene, let's all just focus um, because I, I, I'm sensing that this first scene is going to be crazy. Yeah, this could be um, a scene. I want you to experience it fully. Yes, I get it. Um, all right. If I'm going into the episodes, so that I can start that timer that I just mentioned. Everybody who has uh, been here before knows what we're doing next. If you are new, grab your remote, have that thumb ready on the play button, but don't press it yet because we are all going to press our play buttons at the same time on the count of three. One. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Sorry, my internet. Oh my gosh, Carl. Wow. Oh, Carl. Just kidding. That was funny. No. Listen, it's, like, it's like war flashback. Just tell me when you're ready. Wait, hold on. I got. I do have a question. Are y'all watching the the recap thing? Are y'all are y'all starting at the beginning? There's we don't have a recap. We, we, there's, there's no, no recap. recap. It's a season six episode of one. I don't know. There's no recap. At least on okay. Netflix, there, there isn't. No. There isn't on Netflix. Yeah, on Netflix. if there's one on the DVDs, then yes, fast forward. Yeah, if there's one on the DVDs, take a second, jump past to it. Should be a shot of Luke looking right. at Lorelai with, with what appears to be with just absolute disbelief. Unbelievable. Okay. Just checking. Right where we left off last night. Okay, I'm good. Um, is the person who has the recap, are you good? I'm good. I'm okay, good. I'm good. We're ready. We're ready. All right, All everybody. Right. Grab that remote. Hello. Have that thumb on the play button. We're diving into season six right now on the count of three. We're going to press it. One, two, three. What? <laughs> That's funny. This is a, her hair looks different. This was shot later. This is not from the first, from last season. Maybe so. I mean, she said it. Some coffee. Some coffee. Oh, that would be perfect. Coffee. John, that's not very sensitive. Remember, Luke doesn't drink coffee. He drinks tea. Uh oh, that that's not cool. I forgot how um, very open her dress top is. Not this again. That made me a bit very nervous when she said, I just want to be happy right now. I'll talk about why. For, for those of you in the audience that are like, why? She should be happy. She should have celebrated with coffee. What business is open at midnight to return tables? I was trying to figure out what his shirt said because it looked like he said bike place. Bike race. Yeah, I figured that out. <laughs> 
<laughs> so me. Sometimes I think that Emily and Taylor would get along. They would love and hate each other. Yes, bikers do drink quite a bit. We have a big mountain biking community that comes out to the camp I work at. Someone needs to make like Zima like cozies for like soda cans. It's so sweet though. I really am having a hard time getting out of my head the so all of the circumstances that led to the proposal. Well, what led to the proposal was her seeing how much he actually cares about her and her daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you go back and watch the scene, I mean, I remember that episode. Shut up, John. Why are you ruining this? Why us? does it seem like that box is not really heavy enough for him? He's a strong guy. Mm -hmm. Get the prop. I'm gonna say he's a strong, healthy man right there. What is that little flash? Oh. Oh, there. Why is one and why is one black and the other one blue? Are those Zima? They're turned different. Yeah. Like, yes. Did I catch the whole like they have Zima in the back? Zima's usually blue, isn't it? It usually is, but there was a black one. I thought that was interesting. Well, they have different flavors. You know what? The label had like half blue, half black, so they just had them different to oh. There is something <laughs> I'm dying to say. Go ahead. Just go for this it. This is like almost exactly how Rory reacted to being upset. She ran to her boyfriend and did something impulsive. Boom. Boom. Ooh. Copper boom. Oh my goodness, you guys. Copper this is a boom. happy moment. Oh my gosh. She's Copper appreciative boom. of him. You guys need to stop ruining. Oh, I love right. this, but it is very Rory. much a parallel. It's Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. This is what? very enjoyable. I'm just saying, I it, it makes me nervous. I, I need to grab a bubbly. I'll be right back. <laughs> you <laughs> got my chin. Azima, John, if you this need alcohol to get through much. this, we might need to talk. Carl, wine. John, two seconds. We need to put him up on that on that panel of them women. I'm back. I'm that back. Therapy session. That was impressive timing. <laughs> you need a therapist. John got Azima. Uh, no, it's a course. Of course. Babette. Babette is here for all of us. You saw that name, didn't you, John? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, I guess we haven't seen her in a few episodes. Have we? It's been a minute. Oop. Attention. I still feel that. Oh, we'll talk about it now. What's happening with his hair here? <laughs> it's his it sex looks, hair. It I mean, it looks blonde. blonde. The last hair to he it's his. I, I, I just had like great sex with my fiance hair. It's Zima sex hair. Yeah, I was just going to call it Zima hair. Just, just straight Zima hair. <laughs> Yes, it is very straight. Like it took an iron. Yeah, it's long. Why are we focusing on his hair? This next bit is chef's is like kiss. A wig? Gold. Is it a wig? 
Is it a wig? <laughs> I'm serious. Is it a wig? Look at it. It's not. It really isn't. Um, uh, so fun. I think the thing. I think the thing that's so painful about this is is that I really love how much Luke loves this. John, 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 listen. That's kind of hypocritical, but okay. The delayed reaction is my favorite part of that. My oh, too. Threw a mic to Jackson, like two days later. We already bought the dirty off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did we hear that? Did we hear that? We heard yeah. it. Now, who did you bet those kernels to? Good. Any wow. accidents are on the house today. I've never noticed that line before. Mm -hmm. An accidental pregnancy, perhaps? Let's, 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 let's. No, we already went through. <laughs> this show doesn't use, like, actual expletives often, you know, like network grade expletives often. But when they do, man, they do it well. Yes. They use the one word allowance very well. Like when T when TJ was like, you're a dick. Oh, TJ. Such a good line, though. I love these two women. I know, me too. Did I not mention? Is that modern? Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's still very traditional these days in this place. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're I romantic, mean, you would want that, right? Mm -hmm. To have something nice. A woman proposing to a man and Gilmore Girls when the very clearly gay Michelle wasn't technically gay and Gilmore Girls. Yes, that's mom. Okay, yeah. I'm getting flashes of internet issues. If I'm freaking having internet issues, John Evelyn. Are those, are those two kids mm -hmm. accompanying him? Are they playing? No. No, that kid in the back's not playing. No, they're just sitting there. That kid in the back was like Zach. That song is amazing. They're the new Hepalian. John, we didn't want to tell you you've been replaced. <laughs> I love this top and Jack though. Notice the color. I know. The pants are blue and the top is like a tan. My episode just No one can compartmentalize like a Gilmore. Shauna, you're unmuted. I'm unmuted? Shauna, no, it's, it's okay. Sorry. No, you're fine. I just wanted to let you know.
Yeesh. He's so oblivious. <laughs> I love this Lorelei. Oh my gosh, Emily. I'd be so angry if someone. Uh oh. That bed. Uh oh. Looks so time comfortable. To sleep when you've gone up a couple of dress sizes. That's, that's, I don't, uh uh, Emily. Emily, go more. See, my grandma just knocks on my door and says, are you awake? Mine was just like this, but not because she was <laughs> redecorating the place, but she just, 5.30 in the morning, shades up. Oof, no. Oh, I love that spread. Okay, maybe it is worth being woken up. It's a lot of food. My mom would my mom would wake me up. She would come in and with the vacuum cleaner and just like go right beside me and stare, be staring at me. Like, That's amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is eight thirty a.m. late to wake up now? No, <laughs> no, not at all. Wait, it what? Eight thirty a.m. I don't even get up to work to like nine. Remember that code, John. One 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 one. Don't forget it. I like that. Um, Rory thinks that Emily did all of this for her when the ma maids clearly did. Gilmore Girls always likes me hungry for some waffle. It was donuts yesterday. <laughs> donuts! <laughs> I made a blueberry dump cake. Oh, yum. I did forget the blueberry uh, pie filling, but I just put the blueberries in the yellow cake and it's really good. And then I put some ice cream on top of it. Yes. Bruh, like every yes. other sane person. No school, right. no work. Of course I'm sleeping at 3.30. Ozana. Like star, like Star Trek. How many of us believe that that Emily has ever watched an episode of Star Trek? <laughs> Emily doesn't even own a TV. I can't imagine her sitting in a cinema. I feel like it was on when she was like around. That's just where a character suddenly has all of the the memories and experience of the writer. <laughs> I mean, that just sounds so patronizing. Yep. I know. Like, oh, the cute little girl. She answered, she asked a good question. Wait a second. Was that duck hunting reference around the time when when Vice President Cheney shot that guy in the face? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. What? I don't know what just happened, but I just realized <laughs> that the whole conversation with Charlie Davenport getting all these criminal men off, it hits different now. Yep, yep, yep. How tall is Richard? Tall. Six three, I think. Around for there. I just suddenly remembered the scene where he and Dean are like comparing heights, and then he asks if he wants to tell. Yeah, because I think that Dean is like a little bit taller than him, so that's why I think he's Richard's probably six three because um, Jared is six. I love that I always get answers in this chat. I love this is chairs. this is okay, the, life the big death. one the big one the long one on the far right that's the one there it is 
I Don't love that line. line. <laughs> I think it's as if Paris is tall head. too. I know. I never head. noticed how much shorter Liza was. Yeah, she's only like five three. She's very short. Taller than me though. Talented. Period. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Russ. Paris is me. Paris is me. I love how she thinks she's independent and on her own and her grandmother's cool. That she does not pay for anything, food, furniture, electricity. And she said she's the one redecorating. Hey, hey. The yellow's expensive. Are you paying for it? Come on. That one (laughs) word response to Logan's existence always just makes me cackle. Did you get robbed? I love that line. I I am confused about that. Really? Did I miss something? Why? What's going on with that? With the furniture like that? And Emily's redecorating, redecorating the whole house. Uh, she just uh, cleared it out, and I want Rory's opinion. "Quote unquote," wants Rory's opinion. Got it. Does anyone else love that cash register as much as I do? Yes. <laughs> That's so <laughs> good. <cool. laughs> <laughs> you know, uh-huh. yes, let's call it the hut. <laughs> He has a ton of rings. How are there that many really old women in Stars Hollow? He went to Woodbridge. That he got in the United States. How are there not that many old women in Stars? Also, old women wear a lot of rings. Some of them. So. True. 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 I just got notified that Starless Hall population must be like 9,000 plus. So that's not, not for a fetch to be that many old ladies. Not anymore. Well, they're dead. Okay. Yay, let's celebrate you stealing a yacht 
that belongs to somebody that's not you. Oh, the rich. I know. Yes, Rory really seems to like that whole little yeah. click. Oh, 100%. Yeah. She loves it. Mm. It's like liking the soapy taste of cilantro. You know what, Carl? <laughs> or Vegemite. Or Vegemite. <laughs> yes, Paris is back. Who are you? <laughs> They obviously had sex again. His hair is exactly the same. Or drank some more Zima. See, parents know how to rip people. I love her so okay, much. Okay, now I want to watch Blue Lagoon again. I love how Paris like recognizes that. Didn't I mention Rory and Paris competition? Well, and Rory have similar necklaces on this episode. Welcome in, Zach. A threat, sweetie. <laughs> I love that she never just walks anywhere. She always stumps. The parents. Some people better get to places fast. We gotta do. Why does she lie to him? Which part? I'm totally okay with this. I think she's lying to herself a little bit. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of when Rory was lying to herself um, after the breakup with Dean. Yes. She's like, I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. Let's go. Let's uh, let's go. Come on. I'm fine. Nothing's wrong here. The storm uh, the Bruins. Right, right, Would right. it be a 2000 show if there wasn't a girl asking for only three peanuts because she's learned to eat it? Very, very solid point. It's like the worst nut too. Oh, that's only eating the peanuts. She's my favorite in this scene. I really love that. She's hilarious. Isn't that actress on something else too? She seems familiar. She has a very familiar face. Which one? The blonde the girl. One. Oh yeah, that's um Ricky. She's from Garfunkel and Oates. They're a comedy band. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah.
let's focus for a minute. Remind me, by the way, that I have something to say about or to ask Loretta about um, about uh, Finn. Okay. I'm just like, where's Robert? Go Where is Robert? Where is Robert? And who wants beer and ice cream? Like, good. The twenty-year-old. So I know I'm like 30 seconds behind y'all, but I love how Logan even knows that she Why was she drinking at the bar when she's underage? Just because they're rich? They probably pretty probably. much. They probably rented out the whole bar. There's a there was a casual Heineken brand place. He is so sweaty. I hate that it's accurate. I had a guy that looked like that that came in my office today to like ask about our trails. It took all I had not to be like, get out. You are disgusting. Yeah. Following people around with antibacterial spray has been me the last year. I think it's been the whole world. Let's be realistic. Is it weird that I really want to know what program they're using for the Dragonfly in on the computer? <laughs> I thought you mean, I saw the name. Mean what so you mean what software they're using? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is a little weird, yes. It looks like That's a... Weird. It just looks like, like general Microsoft Windows software. software. It's like a screen capture of something. I'm sure it is, but it's just funny. I just was wondering. Don't get me wrong, it's a good weird that you that you're wondering that it's our kind of weird and we love it <laughs> i love you guys too <gasps> her face <laughs> I just realized that they have um, the blanket Lorelei knit of her and Rory's clothes, I think it was, in season one, hanging on the wall in the background. No, Emily, like, you just called and assumed she would. Like, so speaking of stuff on the wall, okay, behind Michelle's head in the like entryway, in the is floor. that Rory? That painting of Rory? I Another hope one? not. It's really creepy. It kind of is, but I thought it might have been another portrait of her. Not like the one in the study where she's reading, but the, like. This is a wonderful exchange. I'm sorry, Emily, aren't you rich? Do go buy her something if you're that bent out of it. This, that, Did see, anyone notice that Lori just said? Yeah, that was weird. That was a good line. If you had to speak to me, you could address me a wolf. <laughs> we are missing that, that, was probably, that was one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Michelle scene. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I love Michelle. He's one of my favorites. So snarky.
Uh -oh. I love this judge. Yes. Mm. Mm. I actually think it's oh. ouch. <laughs> I'm alarmed by the amount of privilege here. I just adore that judge. So um, this is just a casual reminder. Um, the mission was right. Coral. Look, it's time for Rory to get her privilege check. Rory's acting shocked after she gave her the cold shoulder last time she saw her and wouldn't speak to her. Mm -hmm. You can't <laughs> kill him in the courthouse. <laughs> Don't kill him in the courthouse. The scene. Do we know what any of these notes say? Call the police. That's vandalism. Sure, invite you over. Sparky Frenchman. <laughs> Yes, we do know what some of the notes say. I'm just shocked that Rory's room was in such shambles. Like, she never left it that much. I think it was because she was moving boxes back home when all of this happened. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I think John is very engrossed in this episode tonight. Major. <laughs> yep, yep. She broke. I have heard this whole fraud and scorpion thing so much in the last two years and every single freaking movie lately. I don't get it. Why? Isn't it a turtle? No, it's a frog and a scorpion. I thought it was a turtle. Um, that's both. Both. Right.
She even has the same name. It works perfectly. I always thought it was a turtle. <laughs> Funny. Richard wearing a chain around his neck is so disturbing. The man is a baller. I had I'm, even I'm so upset. Oh, it looks so wrong. But the rich people always wore like stuff to bed that was like fancy jewelry. Well, I'm not crazy about that. I'm so disturbed. I just remembered the scene. <laughs> the bet running was my favorite thing ever. Oh my God, holding her boobs, that I was classy. Her boobs for dear life. <laughs> That's definitely a Sally Struthers thing. She did that on set. I that love wasn't her. a script. You gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I love Babette so much. <laughs> so over the top, but she's so genuine. I just love her. Time to make purple and pink ribbon. Yeah, I, I love how she says she smells toast when she reaches him. I think we should focus for a second. Focus. Is that a Zima? <laughs> no, that's a water. It's the cure to Zima. Is that a frozen water? If you pull that out of the freezer. It's very soothing the way you guys are talking. <laughs> Welcome to our ASMR remark <laughs> session. <laughs> Just wait, he'll eat chips. Oof. Whoa. Oof. Whoa. Anybody God. who's felt that, uh, just, yeah. oh my gosh. You know, that's how you end an episode. That's how you end a good the, I'm gonna, I'm crying and then I'm gonna go and smile because I don't want anyone else to know what I'm feeling. That was, uh, that was pretty sad there at the end. Also, just as an FYI, my dog is really, really into the Vegemite. No, oh, well, maybe it's the dog. No, not, not eating it, but she's just really just can't. She really wants to smell the bag. The she's probably like, like Vegemite sensitive to come around the house. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna open up the couch. We're gonna bring a bunch of uh, other friends up here onto the couch so we can chat about what we just witnessed. Yes. Um, Welcome, friends. Here we go. Well, couch is open. Come on up. I hope that we mentioned the fact that the whole town was grilling Luke for not proposing first. Finally. I, uh, I was worried it wasn't going to let us up again because my hand was raised earlier. 
No. Oh, really? I, I, by the way, you know what? I, I, I said that I was going to do this before and I, and I need to do it and I'll do it tomorrow for sure. I'm going to open up the couch and I'm going to just stay there for like a good 10 seconds at least to just let whatever is going to happen happen. Um, I just started clicking again, like immediately. And uh, clearly not enough people had even been registered by the system. Oh, um, no, I see you. I see my... I, I, I... Hi, Mary. Never mind. Hi, guys. I actually got to do one episode while I'm away. Yay! Oh my gosh, Mary. Yay. It's a good episode for you to join us on, that's for sure. Yes, I um, Okay, what I was trying to say was... Yes. Whoever made the ASMR comment, I'm sorry if that was a little creepy. Um, <laughs> the which, which which comment? The ASMR comment. Did I creep you out with the ASMR comment? I'm sorry. Slightly, my fellow Irish. <laughs> oh, is that a problem? John, don't what? forget to uh, stop, 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 stop. About the thing about Finn. Oh yeah. Yes, well, please. It's, it's the Loretta. And, uh, it's Loretta and Veronica, I'm gonna yeah, ask. Veronica. Like when you were watching the series for the first time, was there any sort of like, any sort of like Australian pride about the fact that you had an Australian character in the show? For sure, I'm so excited. And um, spoiler alert, my name is mentioned by Finn later on, and it's very yeah. exciting. Ooh. Oh my gosh, Veronica. Interesting, <laughs> without, yeah. no, no spoilers, but um, that that's Ooh, exciting. I can't. <laughs> Veronica, um, I was telling Charlie that um, that I could hear, I can listen to Finn say "darling" all day long. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys love Australians, and I'm so glad you and your dog love Vegemite, John. That's just correct. No, oh, I love Veronica, Vegemite. do you like Vegemite? Uh, love it. Do you think that Finn, do you think that Finn likes Vegemite? Finn has to like Vegemite. And Logan said, you know, oh, it's Finn. He's Australian. They love salt. <laughs> we love our salty stuff. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Finn goes out all night partying and getting his heart broken by all the women that don't want him. And then goes back to his like, whatever apartment or room and eats like a whole jar of it on toast just over and over and over again i would well, say you gotta be careful totally you, got, you gotta be careful how much you put on like a, you know rookie mistake is to like is to like slather your bread no, like, he, put, he puts a good layer on it but he just eats a whole it's not nutella it's supposed it's to be nutella. thinly Thin yeah, you put a layer. very thin, you very thin. On top thin. Of, of butter. So you have to do your toast, and then you put your butter, let it melt, and then a very slight little layer of vegetable. Ooh. I heard you don't need butter. Viviana, Viviana, you're talking like a real vegetable pro there. No, I just I lived in Australia for a year. That's yeah, all. she's lived here. She knows it. How about you, Loretta? Did you love having Finn in the series? I like Finn. He's great. I do not like the but um, <laughs> I, my friend used to like slather it on, like he put heat and heaps on with butter. Oh no, oh no, time. Babsy just, Babsy just walked over and realized that I ate, I ate all of the Vegemite <gasps> chips. <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh, you better buy her some more. The cardinal rule, this when you're special. married, you share it. <laughs> Wow. You, hey, some 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 you can you can have a couple bags of those twisties. <laughs> it's not you gotta get in the yowies right. and wow. the wagon right, wheels. Let's let's focus. Let's let's talk about let's talk about this episode. Um why don't we start from the from the beginning? The let's proposal. With, that, with the proposal. Which, the did you love that modern proposal? I'm, I'm actually you know it's funny because last night we ended like kind you know, we ended or we were about to end it was like hey we haven't even really talked about the proposal so we talked very quickly about it but i'm i'm kind of glad we spent more time last night not talking as much about the proposal because i feel like tonight the proposal has much more context we have much more that we can sort of dig into with that whereas last night it was just sort of like i don't really know exactly how to feel about it but i think that my feelings on it are even clearer now than they were last night i was already feeling a little uncomfortable about it. And now I, I, 
I feel like, yeah, uh, very. Okay, tell us why it makes you so nervous, John. Because it feels impulsive and it doesn't feel like, um, it feels like it was like, like the, the line that really sort of hits home is when she, when, when he's sort of trying to slow her down for a second <clears throat> and she just doesn't want to hear it. She's just like, let's go. I just want to be happy. First of all, it, like it's extremely like Lorelai centric, that line, right? Like it's all about like this thing between us has now just become this thing about me. <laughs> and, and then it also sort of tells us that this, this is largely inspired by the need to, um, and, and I'm, I'm gonna say this, this does not mean that, that, that I don't think Lorelai cares about him, that I don't think that that moment was certainly her seeing a man who loves her, her daughter so much and feeling inspired by that. But that and proposal, marriage proposal, are a huge step apart from one another. And for her to, to propose there, because of how that was making her feel, after all of the stuff that was making her feel, feel horribly, um, feels like that's the main reason why she needed to do it, whether she's aware of it or not. And I think that that's a real recipe for disaster. I missed yesterday's discussion, but was there anything spoken about how um, she proposed because she looked around and saw that of all the people around her, Luke is the one who actually thinks like her, supports her, and was going to go with her plan? Like, she thought she had support in her parents. She thought she could work, like, break through to, to Rory. But in reality, the only person who was like, well, this is what he didn't even have to hear what she wanted to do. He was like, we're going to grab her. We're going to hide her. We're going to knock some sense into her. She didn't need to come up with anything. And he was right on the same page. Well, so a, oh, she, sorry. Well, we did, well, first of all, Mary, we didn't really talk too much about it. We spent a lot of time yesterday and we, we talked for a while. Um, on all the other stuff and then like last like couple of minutes I was I was heading out and it was like oh we haven't even talked about the kiss so we haven't really talked much about it there was some discussion that was in that general vicinity but not quite as as um sort of uh as specific as what you just outlined which is which I think is really is a is a an interesting perspective on it for sure to bounce off of that then um, I feel like uh, Luke lo loves Lorelai so much and kind of will do anything to keep her. And so, and we all know that if you go against Lorelai, we all know what happens. And so I feel like he went along with her mainly because he loved her and he wants to see her happy and stuff like that. But I feel like also on a logical sense that I feel like if he, he feels like if he didn't like say what she wanted to hear or kind of like go along with what uh, Lorelai wanted, then she would have gotten mad at him because it's basically Lorelai's way or the highway. And do you think I kind that of feel why, like, do you think that that's why he, why he said that? Do you, do yeah, you really yeah. think that he, that he, that he, um, that that was coming out of him for any other reason than than he genuinely was like like had this worry about uh, about Rory you think that there was at least well, some part of it was him trying to make sure that Lorelai wasn't upset with him oh yeah no. some part of that was definitely because if we go all the way back to Wedding Bell Blues where Chris and Luke were fighting like I generally think um without a doubt that he cares about Lorelai and really cares about Rory like he was like he was her father and if we go all the way back to the uh, wedding episode where he um yells at Chris saying that like who fed, who brought her mattress into her dorm a dozen times who fed her mashed potatoes when she was sick with the chicken pox or things like that so I feel like he has that mentality that he would have gone along with that plan and things like that but I feel like in a sense in a small sense that he kind of also did it because like we all see what happens when you don't go um, with Lorelai, all hell breaks loose. And so. But Lorelai didn't even have a chance to tell him her plan. He just, 
he came up with a plan right then and there. Yeah. That happened to I, be exactly what Lord I wanted. He just yeah, knows I her. I agree with Mary that um, it was, she had, it wasn't as if she sat and said, oh, I want to, to do this or I've tried this and it didn't work. And he said, oh, okay, well, let's try again. It was his own reaction. And I think we get a glimpse of it being his own stance later in that episode that we just watched. Because even though Lorelai is now adjusted to, okay, well, I'm freezing Rory out. That's the new plan and letting her do this. Luke still is saying, no, when Paris barges in, he says, no, we should be being proactive. We should go kidnap her. So it is very much his own stance. And at that point, that isn't what Lorelai wants to hear because she has a new plan. But Luke is saying, no, we should still be trying to go and kidnap her. I mean, true, but... I feel like uh, no, Luke no. is like the voice of reason, even though Caroline, uh, what's her name, Lorelai doesn't want to hear it. And he knows them so well and cares for both of them so much that he just wants the best for everybody. And in a way, um, he's trying to help um, Lorelai just deal with the situation that she doesn't want to deal with. Like, she doesn't want to deal with it at all. She's I'm so glad you brought that up, Vivian. Vivian. Wait, I'm going to say Vivi because I feel like I'm going to mess up your name. You can just say Viv. Totally, Viv is fine. Okay, like, I just wanted to say, like, back in the day. Yeah, it's like Viviana? Viv is totally fine. Uh, Okay, so, like, I'm completely glad that you brought that up because, like, that's the biggest reason why I have an issue with Luke and Lorelai's relationship because in the beginning of the relationship, Lorelai is really kind of, you know, not really appreciating Luke and all that Luke can offer. And that's, like, we're really seeing it right now in this episode. Um, and we've been seeing it a bit, you know, throughout season five as well. And now we're seeing it with this episode, too, where he's, he's kind of like, you know, this does bother you, and are you sure? And, you know, like, he's asking the question over and over because he knows how close Lorelai and Roy are. So, and it's just kind of heartbreaking to see that, you know, like what John said, the proposal just kind of like being a, like a reaction to something, you know, that was very shocking to her. And then on top of that, um, her not really opening up that much to Luke about how she truly feels about Rory and all that stuff. It's like, there's still a wall there, even though she wants to marry him. Yes. And that's just really sad to watch. Yes. John. Are you getting yes. some kernels, John? Is that a good point, John? You might be, you might be getting a couple kernels. No Let begging for kernels. Let me ask you a question, John. Let so, me ask you so, a question, John. Yeah. Do you, do you, not think that their relationship was heading toward marriage anyway? Yeah, I, I, I did, I, I did, I, I, I did. I want timing, them to. I, I mean, I do, I did timing, think that their relationship is heading towards marriage. Um, mm-hmm. I do want it to head towards marriage, but timing is important because if the timing is off that, you know, it's like you could, you could trip before making it, making it to, to throw a football analogy out there, like through the end zone. Yeah. But even, you know, even if the timing was perfect, they still might not make it to the altar. Like, I don't think that the timing really plays that big a role I think the motivations behind it and I actually have I mean I'm glad that they got engaged but I have a different perspective of it like I know that she um saw Luke in that moment and how protective he was but also I think maybe in the back of her mind was a little bit of Rory made me mad and I'm gonna make this big life-changing decision while she's not here as a way to get revenge that's darker than that's darker than I was even going because I think that I mean that's that I'm I don't know I don't know if I how I feel about that I mean I definitely think that this moment is largely about Lorelai and that's the part that makes me uneasy because so much of their relationship has been about the two of them and this moment the most important moment before they would get married, it, it seems to be about where Lorelai is and how Lorelai feels and what Lorelai does and doesn't want him to know and and um, and ask about and 
and all of that. And that to me feels weird. That doesn't mean that I don't want them to, to be together. On the contrary, I'm nervous about it because it makes me nervous. The thought that all of this could fall apart largely because things are starting to get a little tangled. Um, Can you expand on that, John? What do you mean what she doesn't want him to know? She hasn't been keeping secrets from him. Well, I mean, <laughs> if anything, he kept secrets from her by buying the house. Like he already was thinking along the line of family and kids and all that. He wanted to buy a house without ever speaking to her about it. I get, I guess it's just that moment there. It's just that moment there at the door when she's like, I just don't want, I just, I want to be happy. I don't want to, it, it feels, it just feels very Lorelai centric. It doesn't feel like it's about the two of them. I think that that's totally reasonable. That's very reasonable for him to, to want to slow down here for a second. Um, and, and, and talk about that. He does, she doesn't even really, he just, she doesn't even really technically answer him. You know, I mean, he's essentially asking like, like, is any of what happened tonight influencing how you feel right now? Because I really want to marry you, but I'm a, understandably a little nervous that it's coming now after all of this crazy stuff happened to you. And she doesn't really want to address that. She just wants to, she just wants to live in the happiness of the moment. And while I understand that, I totally get wanting that, especially given the awful night that she's had, it feels very much a, not about, about a proposal. It, it doesn't feel about them. It feels about her. And that- but To me, yeah. I, I'm agreeing with that because it, it, to me, it actually almost feels like she just wants to hurry up and get it done. It's not just, it's, it's about her in that moment feeling that, but it's just also like, she just wants to get it done and be married and be, you know, just, I, it's not, a, I can't even describe it, you know, it's just a not fully on like, oh, we're going to get married and like, you know, for marriage sake, for the relationship, it's just like a, let's just do this now. It feels like she's yeah. just grasping for some control, you know, like she's right now not having any control over her daughter, which normally she does because they're like best friends. Right. And then all of a sudden her life is just kind of like coming undone and she's trying to find something that she can control of what she wants to do with her own happiness. Do you think that, that do you think that that is, that that's good context for going into a marriage? Oh, well, no, but I mean, she's, feels like maybe the fact that he's always been there for her is a way of stability and maybe she can control the fact that she wants stability but she, that she doesn't have right now and then maybe mm -hmm. luke can be the person that can help her even though she will control him i don't know there's just a lot of control issues right there yeah, yeah there are for like, sure that makes a lot of sense I think she was feeling alone too you know she no longer has you know, it's always been her and rory and here he was like you know taking up like i'm gonna do this and we're gonna be you know that's what she wanted from her parents so yeah um, um, i think it that it's serotonin oh, replacement <laughs> oh yes Harvest. yeah like totally that that is how i feel about it jessica i feel like there is a little bit of like i need to feel happy right now and i know that this will make me feel happy right now after all this misery that i've been facing um something just like a little thought experiment to do that i had i just sort of thought about um ha has anybody here like taken last episode and this episode and really tried to in their brain merge them together um, in terms of like that last moment, because in, in this, in this episode begins right after she's asked, right? Yes. I was actually going to bring that up and saying that like more recently, they've been doing a lot of those episodes where they're following right up. Yeah. Because they're so I imagine love, well, having first, to wait first of all, I love three it. months for that part. Also, yeah. but I don't know if, again, if it was, was yesterday, sorry, on the side. This this was the season ender that I knew Rory and Lorelai would not be together. Remember, we had this whole thing about oh, right. really end all the seasons with them together, and I was like, right. I can't tell you that because this oh, season my goodness, I that's knew right. it would be. That's right, but in a weird sort of way, they're so not together 
that they're kind of together, right? Like it's like they they're so they like it's almost like it went full circle. It's yeah, it's the most not together that these two characters can be that we're so cognizant of that that in a weird sort of way it's like it's it's like it was so it was so purposefully done that way. Like it contrasts everything else rather than just like a a willy nilly like oh they just don't happen to be together. If that makes sense. Um, but m what I more what I was getting at is is that like ha has anybody because because it's true you all had to wait like a whole year for the next for to to see what would happen next you know no yeah. it was it was three months remember John it was a regularly scheduled program don't forget to harvest everyone harvest oh, your yeah. kernels um I just no said what, I guess that. I'm I guess what I'm, <laughs> oh sorry I, guess what I'm, I didn't I'm, hear no, you're fine I guess what I'm getting at is that um is that like the the stuff that he was saying like right before it's like he's so rory centric right he's like he's like we got to do this we got to do that we got to do this we got to do that you know he's just like only thinking about that and then and then she asks him the question and he just immediately says yes 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 no i get it. totally it's so like he's gone like literally on a dime turned like 180 he's gone from focusing on this to focusing on something completely new and i just think that there's something interesting about that that you don't really get unless you actually think about those two episodes linked together um because is, you're yeah. so you're you're so focused on the last line of last episode and then you come into this episode only focused on what luke's going to respond to that right and 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 so it's like a really exciting moment it's uh, i love the way he delivers that it's you know it makes a lot of sense that he's you know so absolutely 100 sure that this is what he wants to do but if you think about those two moments together they happen within seconds of one another and i think that there's something really kind of a little odd about that i don't know i think if you are like again going back to that point of laura and i looked up at Luke and was like, this guy actually wants to do and thinks the way I want. And you, she asked you to marry, you, like a woman asked you to marry him to her. Your thoughts kind of, your, your train of thought kind of changes. No, it's not unreasonable to think that his train of thought has changed. Maybe, but I mean, he was thought, he was, his train of thought was on something that was extremely important to Lorelai at that moment for it to shift that, you know I mean? Like, hmm. If it would be, it would be one thing if he was like, oh my God, yes, but let, like, let's continue talking about Rory, <laughs> you know, because that's where my head and my heart really is right now. Like, I love you, but I'm really concerned with Rory. He never goes back to that. Like, I also he kind of thinks that he's waiting for Lorelai to kind of take their reins and everything else too. I mean, I think he always wanted to ask Lorelai to, to marry him, to marry him, but she, since she did it first, she's like, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I really want to do, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. but I mean, I, I'm strange, not in the way that like, it's like, oh, he's just going to follow her, it's just that he did want her to do that, to, to take that lead, and also, but was it the right time, you know, it, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. I know. I wonder if he actually... No, I, oh, sorry, it. I, I was just going to say, now that I've done, I mean, obviously, I watched the first episode with you guys, and now this episode, six seasons later, uh, now I want to go back and watch the last episode because of all of these, you know, thoughts that have been brought up, and especially, uh, John, you saying, like, you know, what do you guys think of the comparison between, you know, the last um, episode and this one? So now I'm going to have to go watch it later today. Yeah, I mean, it, they have, just keep, keep in mind when you watch that, that his behavior his reaction to her proposal and his like focus on rory they are within seconds of one another we we just don't have that context because they broke it apart and certainly when we were when this was on on the air at the time it was like really broken apart and in that time nobody was thinking about what he was talking about you know in regards to rory they were only thinking about what's his answer going to be and i just think it's interesting if you put them together and just just think about it in the context of seconds apart from one another. And I know that he does kind of go back to it. He mentions it again, but he's not nearly 
in the state of mind that he's in seconds before she asks him that. And I, and I, and I also re recognize that it's a big deal what she asks him, but since what she asked him, we're all saying was largely inspired by where his heart was seconds before and where his mind was seconds before. I think it's interesting just to think about the fact that he does he doesn't go back there, like at least not to that degree. It doesn't he not go back there because of Lorelai? You know her. I don't know. I mean, talk I about it and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't really know. I yeah, maybe maybe it's partly a Lorelai. Um, yeah, yeah. Can I mean, I, I don't have any judgment. I don't have any judgment on. To be honest with you, I'm just saying it's just interesting. So my perspective on it is that the last season, like the, the finale of the last season, was Luke thinking and focusing on marriage. That was his. That was his major focus, and Rory was the distraction. Like when she comes in and says to him about what's happening with Rory. He jumps into that, but he had spent an entire episode, or actually two episodes, since he started helping um, uh, Taylor, with the idea that I'm going to provide, I'm going to get a house, I'm going to get a family, I'm going to provide stability for this woman, and I'm going to be with her, this is my future. And when Rory comes in, and the thing with Rory comes in, that's what throws him for a spin. So the proposal actually propels him back to what he had been focusing on in the first place, which is why it run it. it okay, I, that that, 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 that kind of makes sense. I mean, it still doesn't change that it's weird to me, but but I, I get that. I get that. I think we can we can recognize that it came from a very genuine place, and it was something that they both wanted. And we can also recognize that the circumstances just weren't fantastic. Um, came from a very emotional place that wasn't fully all about them as a couple. So I think those two things can be true at the same time. It can be amazing that they've gotten engaged, they've got to that milestone. And also it, it's, re it's bittersweet. That's in summary, it's bittersweet. That's just the feeling of the whole thing. I definitely think that there, that, I think that there's rock and some like rough seas ahead for Lorelai and Luke. That, that's for sure. It's always rough mm. with Lorelai though. She's kind <laughs> yes. of a... That is one. true too. Tough cookie. <laughs> Are we good to segue? Yeah, let's segue. Um, let's segue, we segue into, into Babette? Rory and Logan. Um, let's segue into Rory and Logan. Um, uh, Can I start us off? Sure. Sweet. All right. So I have always loved this scene. Um, I won't say to what degree because I don't want to spoil. Um, but I really liked that whole scene with like Rory and Logan and the girls who I don't know their names and Finn and Colin just because like it's kind of like Logan's not really happy about the idea and you can clearly see it because he's not super talkative and then when he goes on the whole spiel of like I give you one month before you're back in school and so at first when I first watched it I took it as like him saying like oh like you got one month um I bet you one month you'll be back in school but seeing it like over and over again um as I got older it's like he's being serious he's like I give you one month and your butt's back in school type thing because he knows just as well as everyone else that she loves school regardless of regardless of her wanting to take some time off and that kind of goes back to our long discussion last night about Rory loving school but kind of hating what's going on right now in her life so I think like Logan's just as much as on anyone else's side than than on Rory's because like she he knows that she's excels at school and this is not her but he's going to also kind of support her and let her do her thing and kind of pick herself back up and kind of um, get herself back without like kind of pressuring. I love that you brought that up, Tasha, because that moment did show that Logan was able to kind of 
you know, like clue into who Roy Gilmore is a lot faster than like the other boyfriends. Like they were like in the same town her and stuff like that, but they, you know, different things, different expectations, different strokes. But like right there, he was out here foolishly, you know, going around doing his thing, um, all his family drama, things with life and death again, whatever. But at the end of the day, he knows that Roy loves school. School and Rory are like best friends. They've been together since day one. They're gonna die together. Yeah, he like you gotta that. support her, but let her, but tell her what she needs to hear. Yeah, which I, I thought was a cool thing. I thought that was a really good um, moment to see and a really good thing to see with Logan, especially because she's surrounded by all of Logan's friends and like Logan's like, excuse me, social circles and things like that. And he's sitting at the bar just kind of looking down <laughs> at, at, like, his drink or whatever while Rory's going over and dancing with these two girls that have been around in this friend group for God knows how long. And it really showed that he even knows that Rory choosing to not go back to school is a bad thing. And I thought that was that was really cool of him. You know well, what I think is the way thing? she was saying, in a way, he was saying, don't follow my friends. Don't follow my footsteps in a very, like, subtle way. I think because he was so in tune about her liking, loving school so much and for her to be herself. But that's just, I don't know. That's, that's just what I was thinking. No, I was I, thinking I, something very similar. Was, yeah, me too. Well, I think that, you know, he's not trying to control her and she's been pretty much controlled. You know, you have Dean who's always been kind of very like aggressive about what he wants from her and, and Jess. And then you have, you know, Lorelai's had her expectations and her grandparents have expectations. And so I think it's nice that he's like, you know, I don't think this is a good idea, but here I am and, you know, I'll ride this ride with you. The offense I'm taking at Dean and Jess being put in the same boat in controlling ways. <laughs> yes. So I don't know. The offense. Well, the the offense. I'm not completely uh, clear on what you mean by that, Lee, but. Um, uh, oh, I was just. If <laughs> ex-controlling boyfriends that Dean and Jess would even be in the same lane. Is, I was just like, ugh. Hey, Lee, I'm can only I ask so you are, so, so, Lee, so, Lee, you are, let me guess, not yes. a team Dean. You are not a team Dean. I think Dean is the scum of the earth. Thank <laughs> like, you. Yeah. What team are you on, then? So, oh, yeah. Jess, all the way. So, uh -oh. oh, hell yeah. Who just Good. said hell yes, oh, my no. friend? That was uh, me. No. Yes, team yes. Yes. All right, none of y'all sounds because I'm team sick. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so, here is, here. Um, so here is my, here's something, um, a question. Who knows Rory better? Jess. Like, who can, who can see into Rory better? Jess. Uh, yes. No, hold on. Hold on. You do not. For the question, you, the John. Two of you do not. The two of you do not know where I'm going with this. You are very, very, very into Jess right now. Who, <laughs> who know? Who knows Rory better in terms of who she is? Logan or Mitchum? Oh, <laughs> Logan. That's Logan. Logan. Well, because because both of we them ask seem, the question. Because, because both of them seem to know her, right? Like, I know you, you don't have it. I know you, you're a special person. You are, you know, right? They both seem to kind of know who she is. Which one's right? I don't Neither. think really either of them. Honestly, you're gonna think this is crazy, but I think that Richard is the one that knows her the best. I don't uh, even exclu think that excluding Rich excluding Richard excluding Richard from the thing. Mary, talking about Mitch. Yeah, Just you have between those two, neither, yeah. neither they well, both hold on, hold are on, putting me... their own their own perspective on her. Neither one of them is actually looking at her and talking to her. They're both reading what they think they see in her. Well, I oh, think yes. it's, I think it's Mitch because it. I think Logan hasn't been around people like her. You know that or he's been around more like the party girls. And so I think he doesn't really know who she is or how, you know, what she is. And he's just so finding out and he finds it intriguing. I think Mitchum has been around the world and he's seen all sorts of types. And so I think he has seen her type before. And so he thinks he knows who she is. Very true. 
But that thinks yeah. he knows who he is. That's why he said he could be wrong. I could see that, yeah. Well, but he could, but he, I don't know. <clears throat> I think. Girl, I'm starting to think that you are Team Mitchum. No, here's the deal. I'm not no Team Mitchum. At the end of the day, I'm being correct because what did Mitchum do that was wrong from a businessman capitalist perspective? You, like, the majority of these people here live in the United States of America, correct? This show was made in the United States of America. Mitchum gave her that realness. He told her no. And we are so used to seeing Rory be right and say yes, 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 yes to Rory so much that when he said no to her, we all were like, what the F is wrong with you? Goes back I was to my argument. He, said, not me. Me. But he also, said no to her. But also, As a like, businessman in a capitalist society, he told her that she did not have it. And that it was that moxie, that guts, that hustle. That drive. Roy don't do, yes, Roy don't do that. I'm sorry, but Roy doesn't do that. Maybe a Many people man, have yeah, been but, through this. If the, you've been told the, off, if you've had that critique on you, for me, I'm in the literary field. I've had harsher critiques than Roy Gilmer ever did. I know people who had harsher critiques when they were taking an English class in high school. What Roy got from Mitchum, that was nice for him. I'm just saying, off of character development, off of who he is as a character, as a person in the show, he was right. Let but I want to go to the scene to Murray. It's, I mean, and I know we're going on a whole different tangent, but I, if what I would have liked to have seen from Rory is that Rory should have asked Mitchum, well, what do you see that I can do better? Yep. That's what they're wanting from that, but that's a whole different Um. Yeah, yeah sorry. I, I derailed that by even bringing Mitchum into the, into the equation. We should probably stay a little bit more. Yeah, good job, John. It's a, no, it's fine. I said what I had to say because he was right. I, I, think I, got, hey, I, I think I got I, I think I got swept away by the discussion of a character who has not been in this season at all. Um, and that uh, that might have inspired me to, to bring up Mitchum. Um, so uh, we want to talk about... Go ahead. Do we want to talk about um, any other storylines? The, the court. Can we talk about the court, quick, Yes. The can court I just ask real? Can I just ask real quick? Because there's so much talking when the whole Jess and all that was brought up. Lee, was it you who are team Jess? I am indeed team Jess. Okay, good. <laughs> Do you have my name on a list Lee, now? Lee, Lee, you got some oh journals coming your way. Um, Pretty much. From um, okay, so let's talk about the court. Um, I love that scene, by the way. <laughs> I, I have to admit, admit, like that, like there was a little bit of, 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 I took a little bit of enjoyment of the fact that, like, not necessarily that that Rory got that punishment, but it was a little bit more about like these wealthy people who think that they can buy their way through the system just being put in their place. It, it it's, it's fantasy, but it, it was nice to see yeah. it in a in a television show for a second. Let's be honest, we were all kind of happy to see Rory get that punch. I yeah, I mean, 100%. I think yes. that if Rory went there with her mom, the judge would have been a little bit easier because, like, going with your grandparents and all that stuff happening, it's, it really does kind of make you come up as, like, a privileged, spoiled brat. Oh, my God, so entitled when Richard was throwing oh. his waiter. I actually was like mad about it and I thought, you know, Logan's gonna get off and like if she was a boy, you know, would she have gotten off easier and and uh yeah, I thought it was too hard. I think that I don't think it was. I think that if Logan had gotten that same judge, he, he she would have said the same thing then. I was I talking agree. with Charlie about this where um like Charlie Davenport, whatever his name is, kind of gave Rory, kind of like led Rory into like, I don't know how to explain this, like kind of dealt her like the easier hand, the, yeah, a trap or like easy hand because like no one wants to um, scare or like upset Rory because it's like hitting a puppy with a rolled up newspaper again. And I feel like, like whether or not it was her mother who was there or her grandparents, she would have gotten the same treatment because 
like the judge said, like, I don't care who you are. I don't care who your family is. So regardless, Lorelai Gilmore can charm the pants off of anybody and sell ice to a penguin. But she, I don't think she can charm a judge to that one. That I well. think Mitchell's and, lawyers would have known that better than to be in that judge. Oh, yeah. And fix the right judge. My, oh, yeah. And my whole point was leading towards, I feel like if, Lorelai would have just let Logan's Lo- Logan's father's lawyers just handle this. She would have gotten something, but she would have gotten a hell of a lot less than what she got. That's 300 hours. And I don't know how many days of that in total that is, but that's 300 hours. Like I've like, I had to put 36 hours of 32 hours of community service my senior year. And I took way longer than six months, but yeah, like, I feel like, um, Lorelai should have just let um, Logan's father's lawyers handle this. I think Logan um, is going to get away with it a lot better than than uh, than Rory did, just because there's more practice in getting him out of, out of trouble. So there's people who know how to do it a little bit better. Whereas this Charlie Davenport, he deals with businessmen, but he doesn't deal with these like minor things. So he doesn't know the courts in the same way. Yeah, that every, makes- every judge is different. You can buy out a judge. <laughs> well, it didn't help that her grandpa was like losing his shit, being completely rooted out of uh, order when it came down yeah. to being in court. Totally. Yeah, and but that was the part that that, that was, I think, the part that made me love that she that she handed them the the big sentence for me it was less about rory getting put in her place and more about the grandparents being put in their place totally i love it when emily's like richard you can't kill him in a courthouse and how do you funny. Marie's barging into lorelei's house expecting lorelei to have everything set aside yeah, John, you said you had interesting thoughts about that. What were your thoughts? About what part? When when Lorelai barged into their room to give Rory's stuff to them. Actually, I don't, I was I don't know. That Emily. And she said Lorelai's that house. this whole thing, I'm done. I'm out. Oh, right, right. Um, oh yes, yeah. I do have I do have thoughts on this, and and uh, I'm gonna start making folks moderators. I'm gonna use this as a segue um, uh, to skedaddle. Um, I I uh, what's the best way to describe how I felt in that moment? I guess I felt probably the most disappointed in Lorelai than I've been like I, I I don't know why but I feel like she giving up there feels a little I don't know it just feels like it feels like the, the aspect of Lorelai that bugs me the most like that it's like it's sort of all about Lorelai like why like why why does she need to give up you know like why does she need to like like why does it need to be about winning and losing and all of that kind of stuff because if she doesn't like, she gets dragged back into her family if she has to do it richard and emily's way that drags her back to the society that she wanted to get out of and that she was hoping rory would stay out well i wanted to ask you john but, um but i mean hearing yeah. that Oh, sorry to interrupt, but like, I just wanted to know, like, what would have been your ideal way of Lorelai handling? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I, I guess I would have, I would just like her to, to just be like, okay, no problem. Like, um, yeah, you're 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 gonna live here with your grandparents, and and I'll totally be supportive of that, and hang out with you, and I'll come over and and whatnot, and 
I mean, she'd been doing it for most uh, for most of the series. She's been she's been going over Friday night dinners. I mean, you know, she she certainly is like snarky and annoyed with her grand grandmother. I don't imagine that to go away, but um, I don't see why she can't come into this world for the daughter that she loves as much, you know, loves this much. Like what, I don't see what the big deal is. Like, it's, it's re it, is it really, is it really about that? Is it really like, I just can't stand this world. I walk away from it. I'm so upset that she finally went back. Really? Is that, it's that, that would, that's so big and so annoying to you that you can't just like that, that it's like keeping you from your daughter. John, she feels that, that they that stole her daughter. They, they, yeah, but I just don't see it like I that. See, the way I see it is that um, it, I don't think it's about winning or losing. I think that it's more for Lorelai about she's not going to reward Rory for bad behavior. If Rory wants to drop out of school, she needs to show responsibility. If Rory wants to steal yachts, she needs to show some responsibility. I think that Lorelai just knows that Rory went to her grandparents as a way to choose the easy way. And Lorelai is not going to support that because, I mean, she told Rory, you're not going to come around or come home and bum around Stars Hollow. You're going to get a job. You're going to have responsibilities. And you know, Lori didn't like that. That's why she went to the grandparents. But I think that Lorelai doesn't like that Lori chose the easy way because it's not what Lori would have done before Logan entered the picture. There's also one more thing, though, that happened, is that Lorelai actually, for the first time in a long time, went to her parents to say like hey we have a situation and i want to fix it yeah what are we going to do about rory and they were like you're right let's do that like let's fix it and they worked together like she kind of humbled herself to go there and work and work with them and then the next thing she knows is that that conversation doesn't matter and rory's already moved in so I think that Lorelai is 100% in the right feeling completely angry at this because she, she, ha she actually made the move. She went to, to talk to them and hours later, everything changed and no one spoke to her about it. So yeah. that's like where yeah. I am. I have a and question. I got something talk about how Rory emotionally manipulated her grandfather. Yep. Like that was one of the worst Somebody hasn't said anything yet. That somebody hasn't said this yet. Right now that she's seeing Rory following in the footsteps of what she was when she was a teenager, the carefree life, the privileged life the do whatever you want to type of thing. I mean, she was always with Christopher. They were always in trouble. They were always doing, doing whatever they wanted. She understood and, and ran away from that. It wasn't, I mean, yes, she did run away from that life of privilege, but she ran away and understood that she needed to have responsibility because if she wasn't going to give it to herself, nobody was going to give it to her. And she, of course, wanted Rory to follow that and understand that and she grew up that way the opposite of what Rory was and so now she's seeing that she's seeing um, Rory just following in like Logan like Logan's uh friends and just carefree that kind of thing and and she's upset about that I mean remember I mean that's the that's also like the baseline of that. But I mean, you've got to remember also that she's frustrated and angry about the fact that this is happening again in her life. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just, it, I, I, I just, I think, I think the issue that I have is just mostly the finality of it, right? Like you've won. Like, like it just, there's something about it that just feels, um, I guess, a bit petty. Um, well, I, John, I think that I, oh. I think that I think that um, that it's valid that she should be up, that she should be upset. But like, you know, mm. 
it feels like she's given up on any chance to like help her daughter get out of this rut that she's in that she's so upset with her grandparents that or with her with her parents that she's just sort of willing to let things kind of continue the way that they are it just yeah and i don't know to me that feels um that that doesn't that doesn't align with the idea that she really wants rory on the right track it feels like it's more about this long-standing fight that she's had with her with her with her parents and that it's more about winning and losing between the two of them. Well, well like what we've seen in the past, you know, in the past five seasons with Laura like Gilmore and, you know, how she thinks about things and how she rationalizes stuff, she definitely thinks in the way of absolutes. Like, yeah, she's flirtatious and charismatic, but, you know, it's kind of like with, with what people complain about in the past, like with music taste, it's this music taste is right and this music taste isn't right. So to go off of like the thoughts of absolutes and then it comes off of something big like Rory literally going to the grandparents and then all that stuff happening and just the reaction of shot, it's it's very consistent of Lorelai and her character. I mean, even the fact of um, with Wedding Bell Blues, how she said, you and me, we're done. And she meant it. Like, we didn't see her interact with Emily Gilmore for a long time. She even waited until Emily said, Lorelai, I, and she clicked off that phone. Like, she very intentionally meant, I'm done. Like, she does that when she is upset with people. And but she's, she's not. tired but, of going back but, and forth. So then, like, when it comes to something like this, it's hurtful to see her do that with her daughter, of course. But it's also what we have seen Lorelai Gilmore do for the whole series. Yeah, but she wasn't done with her. That I guess that's the point that I'm making is that like, yeah, and, and you're right. That that's sort of that's sort of Lorelai in a nutshell. Uh, not that she wasn't done with her for a specific period of time and was really, you know, harshly done with her. But she wasn't done with her because they, you know, they ended up having to deal with each other again. Um, yeah. And so the same thing here, right? Like you've won. Feels very very final and again it just feels very floor alive you know it doesn't really feel like it's about what what it what it should be about which is rory because if it was then she would actually be trying to figure out more ways to get rory back on the right track um i you, i mean i'm not i'm not suggesting at all that, that lorelei doesn't have the right to be upset um it's just more this like you know, like you said, these speaking in absolutes. And maybe maybe the fact that we're watching this in such a compressed fashion, um, it feels like she just said, I'm done with you to Emily like a few episodes ago. Um, and so mm -hmm. in that context, it feels like she's just kind of going back and forth between like, you know, ex emotional extremes. Um, but this that line, I'm glad you brought that up, Carl, the line that she says in this episode of like you won does remind me a lot of we're done um again every right to have been upset in that moment when she said we're done and and uh, i i i am totally on lorelei's side for a lot of this um but I just don't like there's just something you asked me like how how i felt about that that moment that's how i felt about that that moment specifically how I felt about that line. That's it. Yeah. I feel like there's just like so much resentment that has happened with Lorelai and her parents that um, this is almost like she she broke away from that, you know, that world and wanted to have her daughter her way in her own world away from all of that stuff. And then all of a sudden now, um, you know, Rory's going back to the grandparents, going into that world that she escaped from. And it's almost like she's so resentful about all the horrible things that she didn't feel supported, you know, from her parents. So that now she's like, well, now you have a, a better lower light to like raise. So there's just that, like so much pain that I, I felt like was coming out of her in that specific scene when she was just like, you can do have a do-over. You can have a better one, a better version of me. Yeah. So there's just like so much pain going on there. It was just, for me, it was just like, just like a really sad scene. 
Yeah, and that's I get that. I've noticed with Lorelai and her character that, like, whenever she reacts very harshly or, you know, intense with emotions, she pulls the past back out and throws it at the person in the present time. So whenever Emily is like, Lorelai, what is wrong with you? Why are you so upset? She's going off of, like, many years of their relationship and throwing it into their face in that moment. Right, and they're, and they're not same there. Thing happened here in this episode. <laughs> yeah, they're not there. They're in the present day. Yeah, it's right, like right, counseling right. session, but reverting back to like, you know, the inner child experience mm-hmm. that, you know, Lorelai had back mm-hmm. in the day, and she's still bringing it up because she hasn't healed from it. Yeah, I get that. And, you know, that like in that context, like, I, I, Viewing that scene through the context of, of like a hurt child, Lorelai being a hurt child, uh, that that probably re- resonates with me a little bit more. Um, I I'm I was very focused in that scene on Rory because it felt like this was that this episode was mostly about that. But yeah, I mean, put in that way, it's true. Ror- Lorelai is like a lot of a lot of that Lorelai centric all about Lorelai <laughs> stuff and the thing and 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 lines like that like you won you know you can have a better a, re, a, a do-over all of that um yeah that that definitely comes from like some trauma or pain that 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 she has yeah, she needs to. So it's like she needs to work on it. Shot. Yeah, totally. Yeah. She just mm-hmm. needs to uh, either. I mean, obviously, they're not going to talk about it because that's not what her parents do. They don't talk about it. <laughs> okay, so Laura, so then let yeah. so let me then let me then ask this before I head out. Um, then is that crying moment on the bed? I interpreted it as crying because she's sad that she lost Rory. She's in Rory's room and all that stuff. But is is that crying moment about something more? Is that crying moment about herself and about some of that that pain that she's feeling? I think it's everything. Good. It's just lost control of everything. I feel like for the first time, Lorelai um, has finally accepted that she because we go back and forth with the, the whole control thing like all the time like almost every single season we mention it and I feel like for the first time I feel like Lorelai feels for the first time that holy shit I don't I can't control everything like I don't have control over everything anymore mm-hmm. and I lost my quote unquote lost my daughter and I can't just smooth my way or be my charming self and everything will go back to normal because I think in the real world, we all know that like we can all like make things happen. Yes. We're all in our own way, very persuasive people, but I think we've all hit a time where like we don't have it all under control and we can't always just use our wiles, myself included, to get what we want. And I think Lorelai's finally realized that. And I think with the pressure of, losing Laura, losing Rory and then like her grandparents siding with Rory instead of her and then just everything just came to a standstill and just kind of like smacked her in the face and she's now finally dealing with all of the emotion of it and then that's why she threw the water bottle and that's why she broke down for a second and then went ahead and got engaged officially. But- the idea the idea that she would be totally frustrated and in tears because she can't control this the way that she like has been able to sort of control her whole well I mean but she hasn't really been able to totally control I mean like that you know her parents have been have been exerting a lot of control over her and Rory since the beginning of this story since season one um but if if we're gonna go with that that she's frustrated here because for the first time like she just has no control over any of this she can't use her Lorelai ways to maneuver maneuver out of her parents grip and and whatnot um I don't know if 
I don't know if I love that, that that's why she would be in this. I mean, I mean, I, I love it for the story, but I be, but I would rather think that she's, that she's distraught because she's legitimately, um, a f like sad or feeling that she has lost her daughter. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, with Stan, Stan, Stan oh, sorry, just joined as a listener, guys. Stan, Stan Zimmerman. Stan. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Stan, Stan up on. Hey guys, yeah. it's it's Golden Girls Day today. Just FYI. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Stan, happy Golden Girls Day. Well, thank you, and happy uh, Gilmore Gate Day to all of you. Gilmore Gay. Um, Stan, Zimmerman. Gilmore Gay. Stan Zimmerman was one of the was one of the series writers. Um, did, did you write anything this season, season six? I did not. It, the writing went way downhill after. I got... <laughs> Stanley Zimmerman. <laughs> I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, we had an agreement with Amy. She asked us to come on for one year. We were doing development and in, in that world and. Um, so we, she took us to, to drinks, etc. You lost all what? I lost most of that. Did everybody else hear it? Yeah. Yeah, she no, took us, not. she took us for drinks at Chateau Marmont, her and Dan, and said, would you come on the show for a year? Uh, she wanted friends around, and that's how we ended up on season five. The best season ever. Come on, admit it. it it's a good season. Um, I, have to, no, I, have to, exactly. I have to judge it against this season. I'm only one episode in, but it was a great season. That's for sure. Um, did, did, Stan, you, do you have you any, do you have any, any, um, I, I, I love your viewpoint on this and, and watching you watch it for the first time is, is so adorable. And, uh, um, especially like with, my, with some of my theories. Yes. <laughs> so um, what did you, what theories uh were right and which were wrong uh oh well i was wrong has a long i was wrong friend. i was wrong about marty wrong that logan that logan that, exactly. that we were gonna, he was right about we gonna, mitch i was wrong that we were that we were going to discover this first season that that in stealing the boat logan got accidentally like pulled into the engine and his hands got lopped off Oh my god! And and, uh, and and he could no longer hold umbrellas or um, steal things from rich people's houses anymore. Uh, but hey, um, I've still got a few other theories up my sleeve. Um, I was I was correct about Mitchum about Mitchum mm -hmm. uh, totally just shattering her dreams. I could I could feel that coming from um, yeah. say a mile away, but I could I could definitely sense that that was that was on the horizon. Um, yeah. what else did I, what else did I get right? How'd you feel about, um, the remarriage thing with Emily and Richard? Yeah. Oh, I love, well, I love the, I love, I love the, the wedding that, that, that was, I, I was saying that, I was saying that I thought that that wedding, um, all, you know, I mean, uh, it's possible now that I, I haven't maybe seen a lot of weddings on television since I've been, since I was married, mm -hmm. but it really felt like the most realistic depiction of a wedding, like in all of its, in all of its parts from arriving there with your garment bags to like people in rooms. Like it just like, although the, the, the people in rooms trope is something we often see in weddings. Um, but there was just something about the mood of that episode that I felt the most at a wedding than I've felt in any movie or television show. So I really love that. A and lot. you know that that Dan and Amy got married there in real life, right? No. Yeah. yeah. I was at the wedding, yes. And um, yeah, that was where they got married. And when we were writing, we were stuck in those rooms. It was so boring. It was terrible. We hated it. Um, oh, wow. you know, cause we, we, we wanted to be on set. And we were just like locked in the room, you know, working on outlines, whatever, for the next episodes. What was the, what was a big one? Mandy, are you here? There was some big one that I, that I had that, that was just a theory that I threw up just like, just sort of, I it wasn't even, I wasn't even, die? Being, no, that was, it's not, I wasn't being serious. I was sort of like, <laughs> well, yeah, I just said something and then, and then all of a sudden yeah, at the end of the episode, we ran with it. <laughs> I know, I know what it is, but gosh, I can't remember the exact theory, but I had asked you what you thought was going to happen and you just like 
made something up and it happened to be correct. Yeah. I can't remember what it is. I oh, what, no, wait, 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 it, was, it was him buying the house. It was him buying the house, the Twickham house. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, and yeah, like, like you, you said, why do you think, you said, why do you think he's there, John? And I was like, yeah. I don't know, he wants to buy it. <laughs> like, you and, and him to unbuy it. I didn't expect him to unbuy it. Well, I don't know. I didn't really think too too deeply into that. Like, I I, I figured that I, I figured that, and still figure that the road that Lorelai and Luke are on is really, really going to be bumpy. Like here on out. Like that the, that that this this like proposal that just happened is gonna get derailed, and just a lot a lot of like I, I don't expect that things are gonna be pretty here on out. So I probably would have assumed at least by now that Twickham house would probably um, not be, not be a thing. No uh, more relationship has ever gone smoothly. So. I know. And it kind of gets me thinking like, is the whole point of this that like Laurel, I just, it's not in the cards. I don't know. I mean, it is television. It is television. Yeah. Wait, it's television. I mean, yeah. that is on real life. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, oh, Sam, I kept thinking, I keep thinking, like, what if, if you know, they're not going to do more shows with Lauren and Alexis? Like, what could be another, you know, iteration of Gilmore Girls? You know, I, I've often the talked band. about like the, the band. prequel, the band, the band. where, where the would band. the band go? <laughs> the band. Hey, <laughs> hello, I'm right here. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, what do you think of this? What do you think of a, of a series that centers around t uh, 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 two twin brothers, two twin brother musicians that are trying to make it big and their parents and the parents all around them were once trying to make it big themselves and sort of help them find their way. I love well, it. actually, I, um, is that your story? Yeah, I, well, I'm I, just saying, like, that, like, that would be Lane's twin, twin boys. I was about to say, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, it would be, oh, like, it, would, it would be it. Lane, it would, it, it would be Lane and Zach's twin boys now, like, in their 20s, right? Mm -hmm. And they, and they are, um, and they are trying to make it big as, like, as, like, a, a, like almost like an oasis it's like an oasis style like band where like so there's lots of like fighting and stuff between the two of them Quan and steve oh boy i w i w am friends with um andy williams nephews they were had a band with the williams brothers it's like that i just think that like um, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do a band like a band spinoff i think that like it, it feels it feels like doing one where the where the focus is on the characters from our from the from the from Gilmore Girls like Lane, Zach, Ryan, Gil. That that's sort of a miss. I think that I think that actually it would be more interesting if the focus was on those two the two twin boys. I mean, I would watch that because that would be interesting and different than what I've been consuming for the past well almost thirty years in my America. Hey, I mean, any reason to have, any excuse to have, like, Lane and Zach be on and, like, hear them bicker about, like, they're not, like, they're drumming too loud. It's like, but you taught them, blah, blah, blah. But I actually think the, the show that I'm imagining is actually, like, Lane and Zach and Brian Gill are, like, as <laughs> peripheral. They're as peripheral like or like just been featured on the series like most of the series is focused on those two boys and all of the friends that are in their life oh so yes. kind of like how Babette and Miss Patty and Gypsy are to Lorelai and Rory that's how they would be to Quan and Steve so yeah kind of like we would, we, would to draw. we would mostly we would <laughs> mostly we, we would mostly be like very much in the background if if that if seen that often at all you know um it would be it would be really like it would be sort of the gilmore universe but a very different story with like none of the characters but 
every once in a while. No, a you want the characters. Would how about a April? How about, how about April takes over Luke's? John doesn't know. Oh, God. Oh, oh, we haven't Sam. gotten to that point yet. Oh, Sam, Sam. be quiet. Be quiet. Sam. Don't just feel, Sam. I, I, the, the reason why, no, the reason why I don't love it, Sam, Sam the, reason, the reason why is that for me, because I, I just love worlds. I love story worlds. And for me, the world gets smaller when you do that, right? Like for me. But Stars Hollow, that's the show. I want to see all the people in Stars Hollow. I feel like somebody needs yeah. to buy the dragon. Well, well, then, well, then, well, then, if if that's what you want, if that's what you want, then I would pitch the show where we go back to we go back to colonial days of Stars Hollow, and we meet a whole new cast of characters who <laughs> lived in Stars Hollow during the colonial days, and they all are very quirky. There's and they're all the same actors. It's like the Wizard of Oz. See? Well, we yeah, <laughs> I mean, that wouldn't like blow yeah. house on the yeah. that, that wouldn't would bug be me funny. that much. Are we busy? I, I, would, I would prefer them that they not be the, the same actors, but I wouldn't mind if they were. But you know, the idea that the world of Stars Hollow gets bigger rather than it gets smaller in like that, oh, everybody, you know, now the kids are all working there in Stars Hollow and every, you know, to me that just that makes the world the, the world of the story smaller. I, I love it. Like even in this in in the series that we're watching now, I love it when this, the world expands. I loved like the Yale thing opening up and the Chilton thing. Like you know, I like it when parts of uh, a story's world start to start to open and reveal new new whole landscapes of storytelling. And so I would want it to get bigger. I wouldn't want it to stay small. That's just me personally, though. Well, there's two. There's a episode that's going to be coming up, I believe, this season. I can't mention it because I'll just be spoiling. Um, Does it have Jess in it? No. No, no I'm kidding. Well, you guys did it's like, oh my. But anyway, mm. my whole point was the dream. Going to be an episode that will include <laughs> children, and it makes if, if we go by this um, plot line, I wonder. I feel like we should also dive into the kids that were feature throughout the show way where they are now and like how their lives turn out because we'll see children all throughout the series but that's another whole generation of stars hollow that we probably won't ever get to see and so mm -hmm. yeah yeah like wow we just went off on a tangent i know we sure, <laughs> sure did did you already watch the um the uh the Jess spinoff thing that, that Amy wanted to do in Venice. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, we, I watched, watched, we watched, we watched, we watched, yeah. we watched yeah. the episode where they had some of it in there, and then somebody yeah, yeah. posted. Somebody posted. I think it was Tiffany. No, no, it was was it Tiffany or was it T that posted? Um, posted a, like a couple of shots from it that somehow, or scenes from it that somehow got onto YouTube, and they are um, interesting. Yeah, I mean, a a a Amy was so, Amy was so bummed. She really wanted that, and she, you know, was living in Venice for a while, and she really, you know, had high hopes for that. But oh, really? Yeah. Well, no, Can I just say, Stan, on a non Gilmore um, standpoint, what? Uh, what I commented on <laughs> on your post this morning, yeah. I literally was in the middle of season one of Golden Girls. I was watching huh? the competition episode where they go bowling. Yeah, and literally probably my favorite episode of season one. Oh, oh very. wow! But that's not mine. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it just got make me feel bad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's that it's okay. It's okay. No, I think actually today was National Cheesecake Day, and then somehow it morphed into Golden Girls Day. But I, I had no idea, and all of a sudden everybody posting about it. So why not? <laughs> We can hey everybody, I'm gonna I'm gonna head out. Um, okay. but I will see you all tomorrow for episode episode two of season six. Um, I'm gonna we'll be here that. tomorrow, but I'll see you guys soon. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to. I uh, love you all. I just want to say hi. Bye. 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 Bye.